Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sam, and today we are joined by a very special guest, Jay Cormier. Today oh, we hi. are going to be talking about, oh sorry, um, Jay, thank you for joining this video. Um, today I just finished up an interview that should be live before this one goes uh, up, so I would encourage you listen to that 30 minute video before it, you come to this. It was awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. But in this video, we're going to be talking about mind management why it's in my collection, why I enjoy it, and Jay might be adding some fun little design nuggets as we talk about a few parts and pieces of the game. Wonderful. So there won't be a full rules explanation to the game mind management, but the general overview is it's a one versus many deduction uh, sort of cat and mouse style game where uh, there will be one player who is acting as the... Is it, I always mess it up. Is it the rogue Recruit. agents or the, the recruiter? And then the group will be working as the rogue agents. And Trying to take down mind management. Yeah. And so in the game, it's... We'll get there. It's played over a series of rounds, and it's tracked by the uh, recruiter will take a turn, and then the um, agents will take a turn. Uh, I've, for full disclosure, Jay, I've only played this at two, but I think... Uh, I really enjoy it at two, and um, maybe I'm just a little too controlling, but I think I, I'd like it best at two, but I, I'm going to hold judgment until I yeah. get the experience because... The, the one benefit with three or four players is, or five, is that the, the, they you have to you talk to each other, and by talking to each other, there's a real fun in the recruiter hearing all the theories and possibly reacting or counter-reacting to what they're doing, and it really makes you feel like you're manipulating minds. See, I don't know if I have the poker face to be able to just, you know, shut everything down while they're open discussion if they get close. But uh, uh, it's I, fun. I, I definitely am looking forward to the opportunity to at least experience it before casting my vote on what player count is best. And you can play two players as rogue agents against the app as if you wanted to. So uh, that's something you can do. I, I think that's what I'll be doing first is playing against the app with my uh, fiance Michaela. But nice. in in the, the turn sequences, each player will take a turn. And as the uh, the counter is going up, the recruiter will be slowly revealing more information about where they've been able to recruit. And that is done in the form of these. Uh, feature cards. Yeah. And so the feature cards. Oh. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, so the these, these little woodcut uh, guys here will get placed out. So if I'm playing as the rogue agents and... Jay is playing as the recruiter, and a certain amount of turns go by. I might see next turn like, oh crap! Uh, Jay just picked out three, um, picked up three recruits, and I am behind the eight ball, and he's gonna yep. get away. Um, yeah. And so, what uh, we'll keep the scenario that Jay, you are playing as the recruiter, and so he'll have this board here that is a full visual of the main board. Where he'll be with his um, erase dry erase marker will be tracking what spaces he's gone to, and this kind of leads me into my favorite element, um, which will sound kind of simple, but my favorite element to the game is the fact that each location has two different symbols on it, because it creates sort of this um, on both ends uh, ways to hide as the recruiter and. Uh, ways for you to like get stumped as the rogue agents and I'm, I'm probably not going to explain it the best but it's that that feeling you get when um as i'm the rogue agent agents trying to find jay um and i'm putting down my little icon markers and i'm going to use uh is it the inquire action what is the technical term for ask. the ask action um about a certain icon location i might have it fully mapped out where i ask about something that actually gives Jay an escape plan because I didn't see uh, he potentially could have crossed over it like three turns ago. And so that, um, I'm sure the energy more than anything is helping explain it, but that puzzle of like having to really think through and be methodical about what you ask, but also as the recruiter, be like clever enough to try and not isolate the um, icons that you go on. Like for example, I might really want to go on this parrot because if he figures out I was here, um, that would be huge for indicating 
to Jay where what location I'm zoning in on. So maybe I want to try and get to a second pair at first so that when he asks, um, I can give information on that one. Is sort of just, uh, I, I find it really cool to be able to capture that and just putting two icons on a square. And so I don't know if you have any insight in tor terms of like how you were able to figure out what like the quantity of icons that were needed or how to pair them off correctly or I didn't yeah. even talk about it, but the uh, the locations here where you can do diagonals Absolutely. to really change it up. Yeah. Figuring out maybe when that came in the process. I'd, I'd love to hear story yeah. time about the board. It's it's maybe not as exciting a story because it was like as we finally figured out that we wanted to make this a hidden movement game because um, it took a long time to get to that. We went through five other prototypes of uh, totally different games for mind management and none of them felt right. And then we got hidden movement and we thought um, I just had a, I remember being in a car with Sam. I don't know where we were driving from. And I just kind of had this idea of like, what if there was these spaces? They And they said they had two icons on them, but there's like multiple versions of those icons all over the place. And so when you ask about one, you, you, you tell information, but you don't know which one they were at. And I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. But the cool thing about this story is that for the longest time as development of this game, th there wasn't a board. The board was made up of separate tiles. And so at the start of the game, you would separate, you, you place all these tiles down into the grid. And um, we found that, uh, we thought that that would create a lot more replayability so that things aren't always in the same location. But after playing numerous times, we realized it didn't matter. Uh, and there was actually some rules about setting it up to make sure that the same icon wasn't in the same, like next to all of them. So they're all in a bunched up area because then it actually was worse. We're like, well, what if we just created a set board and made sure everything was spread out? And that was way better. And then literally think right from the get-go, we came up with this. We had 16 icons, and uh, we wanted the size of the board was the same size it is now. It was a 7 by 6, which is 42 spaces, which means there's two spaces left over. Uh, if you do the math on figuring it mm -hmm. out, we're like, what do we do with those spaces? And, and we just said, well, what if they're just spaces you can move diagonal? And that, like it, all of that was the very first idea, and it all worked out. Like, there's many other things. This game was not easy to design. It took a long time. Many other things that we couldn't figure out. But that one, for some reason, came together nicely. Um, so that's kind of neat. Well, that, that is uh, – I guess that's cool that my favorite mechanic seemed to ring through and kind of really mold uh, sort of how the end project of Mind Management came about. Um, but a fun side story would be that when we were doing the art and I was getting Matt to do all the art, I told him for the board it has to be functional because there's those two features on every face. I need to see those features have to pop. And when he did the first pass at this, it was it was terrible. And Matt, I like Matt Kim's work from before even doing this game. I was a fan of his. I had two pieces of his art in my room already. And so it was really hard conversation. I was not looking forward to having this of like telling him, I'm like, I don't like it. So I was trying to beat around the bush. I'm like, so, you know, the cover you did and these other things you did, like, that's something I want to hang up and frame. And then I'm looking at this. <clears throat> so I'm trying to beat around the bush and say, like, I don't like And he interrupts me. He's like, Jay, I don't like it either. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> that, he's like, that... it's just really hard as an artist to do something that's functional as well. Like, you don't really have to usually think of function when you're an artist. That's usually a graphic designer job. But he needs, as the artist, has to figure it out. And so, uh, but we chatted about it. And he had an idea, and he came back with that idea. So and I'm like, that's it. That's exactly. I love it. I love it so much. Uh, and he I said it was the hardest thing he's ever had to do for art. Was this wow. board? That that is a fun little story. I I have to say from like, um, so Michaela, my fiance. I don't know if I said this in the, this video or the last, um, but uh, she likes to be sort of the one hunting, and I like to be the one hiding. And so what Matt has done with the board makes it really attractive to just get lost and continue to stare at while not trying to give away information. So mm -hmm. thank you, Matt, for doing that because it's helped me uh, prolong a few games. Uh, she usually yep. finds me, but uh, did you did you see the? There's one secret, huge secret image hiding in the map. Mm. Not on the small one, only on the big one. I haven't seen it, but I will. <laughs> There's I will a gigantic search it skull. obsessively, and then uh, a gigantic I'll... skull hidden in the in the image of the map. A gigantic, gigantic skull. All right, I when that when I post uh, when I let you know the schedule for these videos going live, I'll I will make sure that I have.
completed the task of finding the skull. I uh, Feel free to comment below this video for those watching if you've already seen the skull before Jay announced it, or if you are sneakily like me uh, with your tail between your legs going to look for it. Um, that would be a great... Uh, there's always one more hidden thing in this game than he's like, yeah. oh, like when you think you found all the hidden things, no, there's more hidden things in this game than you think. Perfect. Well, I think that's a great place to stop this video. I appreciate you uh, letting me talk about my favorite mechanic in the game. Uh, I'd love to hear others comment below what their favorite game is. Uh, yeah, I'll let Jay that. know when this video goes live so he can kind of maybe share a few more fun stories about sure specific will. mechanics that uh, if there's a fun story to be shared. So thank you for coming to the video, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.